Hi, everybody. I'm Celeste Perry. This is Chris Bellini, who is our resident film uh, expert. Um, did you get? You are. You know more about film. Just because I, don't know I about like that. Thank movies. you for that nod. I'll take it. But I would, I would say it's film pushing the envelope. Film uh, movie enthusiast. You did yes. It. You, no, come on. I know you know something about movies. So let's talk about the 87th annual Academy Very Awards. And we're only going to do a couple of categories because we, you and I could sit here for till tomorrow talking about this. And you might enjoy it, but honestly, we have other things to do. So you want to go with actor first? You know, actor, the only reason I say it's interesting to talk about actors, as we know, sometimes the road to Oscar has been well paved and we know exactly where it's going. And Eddie Redmayne from Theory of Everything looks like he's a surefire winner. But, you know, we have seen surprises. Meryl Streep. One for Iron Lady over Viola Davis, which was a big surprise. Right. Alan Arkin beat out Eddie Murphy, which is a big surprise. So there are some possibilities for surprises. Why do? You, why are you so sure, or why is the conventional wisdom that Eddie Redmayne is going to win? Well, aside from the performance, which is an amazing performance, you know, if you kind of follow the award season, I think it yeah. starts with the Golden Globes and goes through all the Guild Awards. He has consistently, consistently won every award. Okay. So he's got the SAG Award. He's got the Golden Globe. And, and for that reason, they usually say that's a great predictor for the Oscar. Okay. You know, not saying that the performance was bad. It was a fantastic performance. I think it was a fantastic performance. But Keaton, which a lot of people are like, a lot of people are rooting for him. He's the veteran. Well, they want to see him get there, uh, get up there and win. He could be a dark horse solely because, you know, he won the Critics' Choice Award. He won the only guy, I think, in 20 years to win Best Actor Comedy, Best Actor Drama, and Best Actor in the Ensemble, all for Birdman. Yeah, and I see, when I look at Keaton, I don't think anything about, you know, the other films he did. I really try not to have this sort of collective notion of a person's career because I don't think that's what it's about. I mean, I guess... It does influence the way people Sometimes. vote. And I wish it wouldn't. I wish they could just look at the performance. Why can't they just do that? I loved Redmayne. I also think he's very young. Um, First nomination, by the way. And I do think, and I mean, I know a lot about this illness, having had a personal family experience with, you know, ALS. And so it's a beautiful film. He did a beautiful job with it. Um, but I think that he had, frankly, a lot to work with. When you're working from that place, when you're, you're portraying someone who's suffering, which he did beautifully, um, I think it's tremendous. And, well, it's and a I, transformative and it, role. It is transformative. And we've seen that a lot, right. you know, when people from make that transformation. And, tr and great, beautiful. And, I, and if he wins, I'll be happy for him. But man, I think Michael Keaton is amazing. Because I think that you can see his, his performances out there right. when he's running through the streets of Times Square. Just it's such a quirky apart. performance. And then when you see him quietly breaking down, and when you see him interacting with everybody. And you see him everybody. going crazy, he's breaking up the room. You know, he, he, I, if you're I looking think at a role, there's a wide range right. and to, to take from that. But I think he jumps from place to place in a, in a way that's believable. I, I, I love the movie. And I, I would have ends. no problem with him winning. I, okay. I'm a Keaton fan. I've liked him from back in the Night Shift days. Right, Ron Howard right. Film. So to great. see him pull it off after all these years would be great. I think Redmayne's going to walk home with it, but mm -hmm. you never know, and that's mm -hmm. what keeps us watching. That, it's, okay. it's okay with me either way. Um, but I'm really... I'm, I'm rooting for Michael Keaton. And so can we talk about um, Actress, which I feel that lock. you believe is a lock with... And, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. We're just talking about Keaton. Here's another actress, Julianne Moore. We've right. seen her for years. She's been nominated a few times, never won. She's done all the performance, you know, things you can imagine from comedy to drama to horror. And here's her performance. It's quiet. It's a small independent film. You Did see you say horror or horror? Horror. Oh, Okay. I, I guess I talk really quick when I'm excited. <laughs> I wasn't now, sure. She was never in one of those movies, people. I want to be well, sure. Well, wasn't she, she in Boogie Nights or was that something yeah, well, else? Yeah, but she was an actress. Okay, all right. An adult film actress. <laughs> so you know, there's, there's a I did. I there. just wanted to clarify because yes. it was kind of funny. I thought, wow, he's just like throwing it in there. I'm just throwing everything genre <laughs> out there I can think of. <laughs> oh, Windows, glass, oh, dog, animal. Her genre. Um, <laughs> I didn't see the other performances, but no one's jumping out at me. I mean, well, you know, yeah. Reese Witherspoon would have been the obvious first you Why, know, person. Why, because her hair was really dirty and she didn't shave her legs? Well, you know, when you have one person in an entire movie the whole movie she has to carry the it's whole time. It's about stamina, though. It's about... It's, but, you know, you saw the, the, the whole range in her as well. Okay, all right. But I would say, no, obviously, Julianne Moore, it's her time, and here's a role where she's totally deserving. So you I've can't heard, get those critics And I, I, I'm going to go see that. don't give it to her. You know, I thought Gone Girl was so campy and crazy, but I thought Rosamund Pike was tremendous in that. I would have, you know, when that movie came out, I think that was the first of these to come out to yeah. hit the theaters. I was like, she's going to get a nod. Yeah. Thinking I'm, she's going to win the Oscar. But then, of course, all the other performances came out, and you're like, yeah, maybe yeah. in another year when you didn't have this film, you would have got it. I'd like to see her in that kind of, that perfect small role where she gets to really act. Because I thought she did a terrific job. I agree. And I think it's very hard sometimes for, well, she was a Bond girl, right? For these gorgeous women to 
step away from just their beauty and you know well, be taken was, seriously. Talk about stepping away, right? There's a role to do. Crazy. Huh? She was really good. So now let's just do best best picture. Best picture. You know, obviously it's very interesting. A lot of people have two kind of groups there: the Birdman group, and then there's the Boyhood group. Uh huh. Right. Because of course, Boyhood is this very intimate film shot over 12 years. People like like this idea of him trying to capture these moments, which he did. Yep. Over 12 years, and no one's thought about it. No one's done it before. So there's a lot of people saying that that is going to be the movie to win. There was a BBC documentary like that that, that followed. Kids I remember. For was years. it three kids or four kids? Yeah. Like, and yeah. so it's, I mean that. There's been a little experimentation, but still, I agree with you. What a what a cool idea. I think it is, but I think Birdman's going to win. I hope Birdman wins. The only thing about Birdman that you know, we can talk about it when when the cameras stop. Loved it, explained it, but that ending. I keep on talking <laughs> about people ending. There's so many interpretations of it. It's no true. one seems to say like, "Whoa, that was the ending." Which I am so happy for because I think, like in the case of like, maybe what was it last year? Gravity. Yes. Well, you're pounded over the head with what's that happening. That didn't win Best Picture, though. <laughs> okay, but it was not. I like Sandra Bullock. <laughs> she doesn't like Sandra Bullock. Let's always, not open up so I always here. bring it back to that. But you know, we're pounded in the head with messages. There's like, oh, we can't be too subtle. I mean, come on. I thought it was terrific. My husband and I drove home after Birdman, and he was pretty sure this happened, and I was quite sure something else happened. Great conversation piece. So come on. And I think it was uh, the director's name. He's got this Alejandro Enruto. Enruto? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think it, it was beautiful. I think you're going to see him win. I think yeah. you're going to see Best Screenplay go to them for original yeah. screenplay. And then Cinematography. I know the gravity guy who won for cinematography yeah. last year is nominated again for this role. I think he's going to get that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for him because it's a really beautiful movie. Birdman all the way, I hope. Um, and I know that we're going to wrap it up here in a minute, but there was one other thing that you wanted to, one other uh, category that I well, don't know anything about. I'm a big fan of uh, movie scores. A lot of people say, what do you have on your iPod? What do you listen to? And it's mostly movie really? scores. And, you know, Hans Zimmer is one of my favorite guys, John Williams. And Hans Zimmer is nominated for Interstellar, uh -huh. which in any other year I'd say give this guy the award. But then you have Andre Dupla, and I hope I'm not butchering his name, Mm -hmm. For Grand Budapest Hotel, double Ooh. nomination, and for Imitation Game, which I have that, loved it. I'm rooting for any of those two guys, but then, of course, you've got Theory of Everything. Johan Johansson, he did a film called The Prisoners. He scored it, which was beautiful, beautiful score. I think he's going to walk away with it. Okay. But, I, I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for Zimmer a little bit. He hasn't won, I think, since The Lion King. But Yeah, see, I, I don't remember. I don't know. I can't think of what I thought of any of the scores. I mean, Grand Budapest Hotel... I well, think I know, you're an Anderson fan. She's an Anderson I fan. Like I, I like Anderson, appreciate his art, but, you know, not mm. the big, best entertaining. I, th I thought it was terribly entertaining. The Grand Budapest Hotel m musical score, do you, have, do you think you know who's going to win? That would be the only upset because I think it just won the Grammy. I know it's eclectic. It's got that, it, it has sort of that, all the different elements together in it. Okay. But that would be the upset. I think it's probably going to be um, definitely... Johansson. Johansson. Um, I guess what's, we don't have too much time, but uh, it's amazing how we're not talking that much about Selma anymore, which I thought was going to take much more. I thought, Isn't that oh, sad? Yellow well was Great, going to. beautiful movie, yeah, well yeah. acted, and then all of a sudden it kind of just drops off the radar because the, the nomination's best picture. I think it's going to win best uh, original song, Common and John Legend. Yeah. So okay. one of the two's well, not bad. 50% of the win's not bad. All right. Well, it was a pleasure once again to speak with you about it. Always a pleasure. Movies. Terrific. Enjoy. The Academy Awards. We'll talk about, you know, we'll go through this when it's over. Let's yeah. do it. Let's see who's right and wrong.